I want to see the power of this country in action. Oh, I think it crosses the line of insubordination, and it crosses the line of the military code of justice. This was a stupid move by McChrystal. So embarrassing and inappropriate. We're very, very precise about what he said, what the aide said. Our troops deserve more. He's got to can the guy, just as Harry Truman did to Douglas MacArthur. And fire this jackass General McChrystal. He ought to be canned. How do you blame the media for this? So the vermin in the media did this to General McChrystal. Andy Mitchell and Puffball, two Democrat operatives, were the most vicious and cowardly of all. They should go down into the Museum of Vermin. In fact, I think I'm going to put together a Museum of Media Vermin, and the two leading figures will be Andy Mitchell and Puffball of MSNBC, but there are others. These rats, these bums are the people who are undermining America on a daily basis. I only pray, and here's my prayer, and I'm going to say it very clearly. I only pray that some uh, off-duty or retired military do not go on a night mission, a special ops night mission in Washington, D.C. I pray they don't do that. Because I want to talk now about high times at White House High. You know, it's been said that um, General McChrystal uh, was not mature enough for the job. Let me ask you a question. Who is more mature Barack Hussein Obama or General McChrystal? Are you kidding me? He's not mature enough for the job? A fourth-generation military officer, a man who's actually been in combat on night missions as a general, as opposed to this joke they just put in, Betrayus. Betrayus they put in. Another one, another desk jockey. They took McChrystal out for many reasons, the least of which is the so-called insubordination, because there was no insubordination. There was no insubordination. And let me remind you of something else. Loyalty is a two-way street. And Obama is the least person on earth to talk about loyalty to the military. And let me tell you something else. Insubordination is a very precise statement. It does not involve expressing disappointment in your superiors. And yet, that's the only thing that Crystal did when speaking with a drug addict from Rolling Stone magazine. But when this is recorded in history, I want you to remember something. I want you to see an out-of-control, immature, inexperienced chief executive who has based military uh, uh, military policy in the midst of a war on a magazine article that appeared in a magazine that specializes in promoting drugs and weird sex. This is your president, surrounded by surrounded by vermin from Harvard and Yale. Vermin from Harvard and Yale who were offended that a general did not like some of the people in the chain of command, and he called them wimps. He called them wimps, by the way, during a uh, time of blowing off steam in Paris when he trusted this rat-bum degenerate drug addict from Rolling Stone and took him into... I don't know how this happened with the Rolling Stone drug addict. I really don't know this. Why would General Petraeus confide in a druggie from Rolling Stone magazine is the real question. Well, the answer is because he's a real man. He's a straight-up guy. And they were together, by everything I've read, during one of their uh, blowing-off steam sessions after actual war, actual combat, as opposed to Andy Mitchell, whose only job is buying lingerie in a department store in Washington. Andy, you're a disgrace. You and your husband, if I were president, I'd have you indicted. Andrea Mitchell, do you know who she is? Andy Mitchell was the most vicious of all the jackals. Andy Mitchell whose husband was the FCC chairman, excuse me, the uh, the chairman of the uh, money supply. Remember him? The man who bankrupted America, those two corrupt bastards? That's my opinion. Both of them should be indicted. The government media complex, Andy Mitchell and her ex-husband. You have respect for those people? I have no respect for those people. I have respect for General McChrystal. This is the media who believes in freedom of speech? This is the liberal media who uh, respects outspoken people, this is a media that depends upon freedom of speech, and they're quick to jump on a man who said a mild thing about Joe Biden. Joe Biden, the biggest doofus in the history of the, of the vice presidency. Joe Biden, a real tremendous hero to America. Joe Biden, thin-skinned president, fires general, will not tolerate any criticism. He'll be remembered as President thin Skin for the rest of recorded history. And don't forget that it was the vermin in the media who did this to General McChrystal. Andy Mitchell and that rat-coward bum puffball were the most vicious and cowardly. 
But there were others. Lindsey Graham, that lizard. Lindsey Graham, that lizard, called for his ouster. John McCain, that yellow-bellied, two-timing bum, called for his ouster. How could McCain ever run for office again? He called for amnesty and now says he didn't. He put a knife in the back of General McChrystal because he was jealous of him. Because he knows a better man when he saw one. John McCain, what a shame he is. God, we missed the bullet with him. I don't know who would have been worse, Obama or him. Look at the choices we have. There are many, many problems here, but high times at White House High is the real problem. All joking aside, Obama's been having a high time in the White House, and he's high on a power trip right now. He got rid of McChrystal because of an article that appeared in a magazine read by degenerate junkies that promotes drug use. And remember, General McChrystal never directly criticized President Thinskin. So because of a meaningless article, in a magazine equivalent to High Times, Obama is high in his own power. And we know who's going to be replacing with Crystal. It's Petraeus, the commander of CENTCOM. And while Petraeus has served honorably, he's a very different kind of soldier than Stanley McChrystal. McChrystal served on the ground in special ops during Operation Desert Storm. He went on night missions with his men. Petraeus saw combat for the first time when he commanded the 101st Airborne Division during the invasion of Baghdad in 03. We do not know if he actually took part in the battle. McC McChrystal, don't forget, successfully tracked down and killed al-Zarqawi, the leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq, while Petraeus successfully got a Ph.D. in international relations from the Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs at Princeton University. McChrystal runs seven to eight miles a day, eats one meal a day, and sleeps for only four hours a night, de devoting the rest of his time to America. Petraeus, if you remember, fainted last week while being questioned by the Senate Armed Services Committee. He fainted. So you can see the man Obama fired and the man Obama hired are two very different soldiers. One is a fighter and the other is a fainter. So why would the White House want to change commanders in the middle of a war based on a few nothing comments made to a junkie journalist in a nothing throwaway magazine read by drug addicts. Well, here's another interesting difference between McChrystal and Petraeus. You ready for this one? Because you haven't read it yet. We looked it up. McChrystal has never publicly expressed any opinion on don't ask, don't tell. Though we know that most real commanders are opposed to repealing this policy because it would destroy unit cohesion. But Petraeus, on the other hand, is on record saying that it's time to look at repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And strangely, McChrystal's firing comes right at a time when Obama is trying to push forward this insane policy change. So there may be more to all of this than just a few mild remarks about Joe Bite Me. But let's talk about how the media has handled this story. From the moment this story came out, the vermin in the left-wing media attacked McChrystal over and over again. The human gefilte fish, Robert Gibbs, question McChrystal's maturity. But what does it say about Obama's maturity that he would take a story from a druggy throwaway magazine seriously and base military policy on it? Clearly, McChrystal was set up by a so-called journalist who took advantage of him when he was just blowing off steam after coming out of a combat zone. And the result is that Obama has replaced a fighter with a fainter. It's the worst decision Obama could have made and I pray to God that nobody wearing a uniform, no woman married to anyone in uniform, nobody in the military ever votes for a Democrat again. I'll be right back. Seven.